So you really recently released your second album, but the sound's totally different than your first album. So where did this change in the sound come from? I know before, when we talked before, it's with your self-titled, it basically was you, and then you had the band members around. And now Burn Halo is really more like a band. So where did this change of sound come from? Four new band members and three three more songwriters. <laughs> Um, I mean, was it a? But, but I love I love the self titled and I love the new one, but it is totally different. Yeah, it's a different band basically. Um, four songwriters instead of two, four different influences instead of two with one idea. Um, we started writing for the new album, and we were writing stuff more along the lines of what you would have heard on the first album, just like simple, like really like easy listen like rock. And we were trying to really force those songs. It was just like wasn't really coming natural. Uh, holding back, like, oh, that's too metal, or that's, uh, you know, that's too heavy. And it was just like, that's not, that's not us, you know? Like, we're, we want to write heavy stuff, and we listen to metal and stuff like that. And why not, like, why not let those influences come out in our music? Why? You know, why be why be like a band that forces you know certain songs to come out? And it's just uh, you know those, the early stuff just wasn't wasn't us. And we just kind of found ourselves chasing our tail when writing and trying to like fit some specific mold that we thought that we had to fit into because of what our last record was and you know the expectations that maybe you know our label had or you know program directors of radio stations, stuff like that, you know, just, we just didn't want to do that, we wanted to, you know, we wanted to write, you know, what we wanted to write, and, you know, up from the ashes is what, what came out. So then where did the sound from the self-titled come from? Was it basically you and writing with Zach? And yeah, it was just, it was just me and So Zach. that was different from 18 Visions, but the last 18 Visions album did have a poppier sound, so the sound had changed there too, but... I mean, it was just me and Zach, and it was really like basic like standard like chord progressions um neither one of us were real riffy guitar writers and I still like not you know not really like that you know I can I can put together a riff here and there but it's easier for me to put some like you know some chord progressions together and have somebody else fill the space and and that's what the first album was you know and it wasn't wasn't that like I you know I was forcing those songs to come out I I mean, the songs came out rather easy, and it was just more of, uh, you know, the kind of record that, that I wanted to make, and, and going back, like, you know, I wish there were a few more riffs on the album, but, you know, that wasn't the case, and, you know, I, I forced, I, or I tried to force the issue of bringing in, like, a guitar player to write with us, mm -hmm. which did end up happening, but it happened, like, you know, a little too late, mm -hmm. to the point where we only got, like, a couple of songs um, written with them, and I think that... I think that because of that, a lot of the songs on the first album are just a little, you know, a little lighter, a little softer. And, and two, we, you know, we didn't rehearse. The songs were never rehearsed. It was just, they were just put on the tape and that was it, you know. We played through all these new songs before we recorded them to see how they would feel, you know, live. Like, the feeling of them, the changes, the, you know, the progressions, the, uh, you know, the turnarounds after the cor after the choruses, stuff like that. Just just the overall feeling of a song, the song length, and do we like playing it live and stuff like that. Just was important to us when we were doing the new album. It's so because really, then the first album really was it was a singer songwriter's album. Totally. Yeah. It totally was, and I mean, it, it, you know, it fits in it fits in great with bands like Buck Cherry and Hinder and you know Saving Abel and bands like that like you know if you like those bands like you'll love like the first album and that's you know and that's fine um, you know I think that the first album still has a lot more edge than you know a couple of, a couple of bands I just named off and you know some heavier parts but um, you know it was it was originally geared to be you know a potential like solo album and you know there was no band behind it and you know when we played the songs live it was you know as a band, we did the best we could to like, you know, connect to those songs, you know, from drums all the way to vocals and everything in between. And you know, I, I think that with the new album, because the guys, you know, wrote the songs and tracked everything, that you know, the, the emotional connections there on every song, and you know, it's really going to speak. I think live. 
So who do you see you touring with now, since you named those other bands that were similar to the first album? Where would you put yourself now? Uh, it's not that we wouldn't tour with those bands, because if it made sense for us... We toured with Hinder, 18 Visions. Yeah, if it made sense for us, and like, you know, it was it was right, and like we, you know, we were playing, you know, the radio game, and going out and mm-hmm. trying to like, you know, to promote the track at radio, which, you know, which we're always doing, then that's, then that's great, but we want to tour with... I think like you know heavier bands that are format you know the bands that don't necessarily break the top ten but they're in that like mid tier but still sell records and you know I think that I think that a lot of the bands that are format for radio they just have like one or two songs on an album that hit and the rest of it's all filler and you have eight tracks of filler it's like you know it doesn't I mean, sell an album. It doesn't, and it like sells iTunes. It, 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 yeah, yeah it, it doesn't, and like you may sell some albums here and there, but like you know, when you're playing shows, like people people are gonna come to see the hits, and that's it. Like there's no like there's there's like no substance, you know, to you know the rest of the the rest of the tracks you're playing live, and you know we want to we want to be a band that makes a complete album from top to bottom, where if people leave our show not hearing three or four songs, that they're upset and disappointed that they didn't hear those three or four songs, so they have to come back the next time to guess, you know, and hope that we're going to play those three or four songs, and, you know, it's bands like that that, like, you know, have success, like, touring, and, you know, that's, you know, that's what it's all about is, you know, day this day and age is, is, is touring and your live show, and I think that that, you know, radio and video will help you sell records, but, you know, what's going to help keep you afloat is, is your touring, and, and, and that's, like, you know, that's the foundation of any band. It's so true. I mean, we have talked before, I mean, not on camera, but off camera, just about the whole music industry and now, and looking back in your career, you know, what would you say, like, when you actually make it in this, in this industry now? Does your vision of how you want to look at success change from when you started out with 18 Visions till now? Because the music industry has totally changed. Yeah, well, I mean, 18 Visions to me was, was a fairly successful band, and... I think that I think the downfall of the band was not being able to share like the same goal and same vision and like we were so you know we were in so many different directions when it came to like writing writing music and you know trying to keep everybody in the band happy and then you know trying to appeal to the fan base and but still like make the record that we want to make and you know, there's there's just a lot of conflict there, and it was just because we didn't we didn't share like the same goals, and you know it's it's unfortunate because I think if we did, if we had the same like vision and ideas like from top to bottom, that you know we would have been able to take the band to the next level, um, but we didn't, and you know there was there was a little bit of success there, you know touring and you know selling records and stuff like that, and you know, I think that, I think that the goal for any band should just be to, you know, be able to tour, like, you know, just about anywhere in the country and then anywhere in the world and, and, and draw, like, you know, 250, you know, to 500, you know, 500 people or more, like, overseas and, you know, 500 plus in the States for, you know, for American bands. And I think that if you can do that from record to record, that, you know, you'll have some success. I like that. That's a very reasonable goal instead of people that think that, oh, you're going to put out an album and sell out huge venues right away. Because bands don't do that anymore. No, few, but not many. Very, very few. I mean, you can put out an album and, like, have a hit and make a million bucks, but, you know, what's what's your, you're you're only as good as your second single or your second song or... Or your first sometimes. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So it's just (laughs) like, you know, that's, that's that's the thing that bands don't get is that, you know, you need... You need complete albums, you know, to like really be able to have success and like sustain it. True. And I have two fun questions. You're gonna have to zoom in, or you're gonna have to get closer. I want you to pick one of your tattoos and give us a story behind it. Mm. I don't like many of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little that guy right fun. there. Can you see it? Chicago Bears logo, Bears fan. There you go. You're a total Chicago fan, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. 